Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my Cloak and Dagger Season 2 videos, and today we're going to be talking the review and the Easter eggs of the third episode of the second season, otherwise titled Shadow Solves. Now, just like the two hour premiere, this episode was infested with Easter eggs and references to the comic books, the Cloak and Dagger comics, and otherwise, but at the same time, there were characters that we haven't met since Season 1 that we needed updates on. There's a time gap that they needed to fill, like Adina Johnson, for example, or Father Delgado. So that is exactly what this episode did, it told us how Mayhem decided that her mission is to bring these girls back, it told us as well how this drug arc that we did see on the trailers that we did watch in last week's episode fit in the bigger picture, the bigger arc, this entire human trafficking arc that we're going to be watching this season. So obviously the drug bit was just a plot device, the drug bit was just to lead into finding the girls, into getting into the entire human trafficking thing and into the murders that we did watch in last week's episode. Now, all of that, it was leading into Tyrone and Tandy finding out about Mayhem and trying to figure out what her next destination is going to be and who it is that she's gonna be going after next. But alright though, let's talk details and specifics. So, Mina has this back, she's experimenting, she's researching, she's trying to figure out the impact of a small dose of the Roxxon chemical agent. Now, in this case, it's a 6.5% concentration that she's trying, she's trying to figure out the impact and she's using lab rats for the purpose. So you could really see the funny in her comment. Don't worry, these cosmetics were tested on humans. Like the pun considering it's always done the other way around, but more importantly over here, the biggest thing that they need to worry about, the lab rats that is, are not really the cosmetics, but rather the chemical agent being used on them. But obviously though, all of this has been about mayhem, the violence and anger in her, considering the reaction of the rats splitting into two, with one of the two versions, the newer version, obliterating the older one, but we also now know that Roxxon is still behind a lot of things. It's not the villain of the season, seemingly it's not the villain of the season, but they've still managed to ruin lives in a way. I do believe as well that this is a quick reminder that Roxxon will be back at some point. Like, hey, Roxxon is still in the background. They might be still doing their thing. I mean, you just got one head. It's like Hydra. They're not over yet. But circling back to Mayhem and what's going on with her, Mina does explain later on in more detail. Bridget and Mayhem are obviously more like identical twins now, same everything, they share everything that identical twins share with the addition of memories. Only differences are, one, their new personalities and two, their new memories, because they're forming all new memories, distinct memories, from the moment of their split. But still on Mayhem though, they don't seem to be doing the entire green thing with her, so her green nail polish and fingernails when she first wakes up. This kind of little detail, that's the kind of easter egg to her greenish self in the comics, and the talents that she gets as well with Bridget's reincarnation as the character over there. But that bit though, out of the comics, gets paralleled once again with the shot in present day, picking up from last week, with the blood on her hands and fingernails, and her fingernails being painted green. But speaking of all of these time jumps between flashbacks and present day events, Father Delgado is back and 200 days ago ends up with Mayhem in his way asking about Tyrone and she's under the impression that he could help her find Connors like we were friends in another life. She still has those memories, she still has got a little bit of those feelings as well. Now obviously she's had a change of mind, a change of heart over that period between these events and the events of present day. Not that she's not going to try to find Connors, but rather that she's had a change in priorities. She's decided her priority at the moment is to find, rescue and help all those missing girls, but at the same time sate her bloodlust by finding those responsible for the abduction of these girls and exacting vengeance upon them. But Father Delgado though to Mayhem has also become some kind of refuge as a person rather than a place, kind of like the case is with Tyrone and Tanny in the comics. It's basically drawing a parallel. In the comics, his church, the Holy Ghost Church, is the place and he's the person, and over here he's just the person and not to Tyrone and Tandy, but rather to Mayhem. He kind of, in a way as well, played the same role that he played with Tyrone on Season 1, but more importantly with both C and D in the comics, a moral compass. Someone who over there does question the morality of their actions and debate it with them, just like he does over here, or sort of does over here, with none other than Mayhem. But another thing that we get out of her conversations with Delgado is that she lacks empathy, that she does not feel guilt, the way she puts it. Here's the thing, sins have weight, guilt attached to them, I don't feel any of that, if I have a soul it's not in this body. But there's also this other thing about her relationship with Father Delgado that makes her more like Tyrone and Tanny in the comics. They might care about Father Delgado, but more often than not, they do not really listen to his preaching about morality. 
As a matter of fact, on their first appearances on the pages of the comics, their first issues, they are more violent, Tyrone and Tandy that is, and in the meantime, Father Delgado is always talking to them, trying to help them, trying to preach to them against that very kind of violence. Still on Mayhem and Father Delgado though, she is also a reference to them in another sense, the sense that she feels the need to explain herself, justify herself to Father Delgado, and in the comics, they might actually not listen to the guy's preaching, they might not actually act upon his preaching, but nonetheless, they feel the need to justify their actions to him. But moving on though, Tyrone teleporting all three of them, him, Tanny and Bridget out of Mayhem's way was very comic book-like. Now as I mentioned last week, Tyrone's powers are evolving, we're seeing new powers to Tyrone and this is nothing new, not out of the realm of the comics. The only difference on this episode or the only new thing is he just teleported Tandy and that basically felt like a reference to him teleporting Tandy a lot of the comics, like she gets the maximum benefit out of his teleportation abilities in the comics. But back to Mayhem though, because we're going to be talking a lot of Mayhem in this video, I mean the episode was very Mayhem centric, she's got the ability to catch Tandy's daggers. Now this is a straight out reference to the fact that on the pages of the comics, these very daggers do disintegrate or kind of disappear in a manner of speaking of course when they come in contact with the green venomous gas that Mayhem emits. And yes, everything about Mayhem in the comics is kind of green. Now her slitting of that cop's throat on this episode, that's yet another reference to her abilities on the pages of the comics. In the comics, she uses her talon-like fingernails to cut through her target's skin that is basically to allow her venomous gas entry into their bloodstream. Now that cop, Connor's past partner, did tell her the truth over here, of course under the threat of force, but the fact that she could get the truth out of him on a first try did feel like a little bit of a reference to her green gas, the green gas that she emits in the comics. So pretty much, and in the comics, the gas finds its way into the bloodstream of her targets and it acts like a truth serum. So just like this guy was forced to tell her the truth only because of her strength, in the comics her victims or targets are forced to tell her the truth, but only because of the gas. But let's though switch to a returning character that we haven't seen in a while, Adina Johnson, Tyrone's mother, and we did have our doubts when it comes to her on season 1 when it comes to her connections to Roxanne, and it was all about whether or not she was corrupt back then or possibly being forced into being part of the corruption. Obviously though, this time around she is being strong-armed into giving corrupt cops a free pass and that is possibly a tit-for-tat kind of situation, a situation where she's forced to try and save Tyrone because he's on the run at this point, he's been on the run since the end of season 1 for the murder of Connors. So it might have been something around the lines of you give us a free pass in front of the community or with the community and we're just gonna go easy on our search for your son. But anyway though, one moment before that we get to have a look at Mayhem's wall and we see a newspaper clipping, an obituary for William Johnson aka Billy aka Tyrone's brother killed by none other than Connors. So it all kind of helps us see the connection, draw the connection, presents us with a callback to Adina's biggest fear on season 1 losing Tyrone the way she lost Billy, which also happens to be why she kept acting like this overprotective and overbearing mother throughout the first season of the series. But talking briefly though of things we know about Mayhem and the abducted girls, we get to know how she let go of the Connor thing, like sort of temporarily, but nonetheless let go of it in order to find the abducted girls. We also get to know that she's been way ahead of Tyrone and Tanny on this one, like over a hundred days ahead of them. But on this episode as well, we get to see a point of transformation for Tandy. We get to see her change her stance from looking for mayhem, on the lookout for her, trying to find her, trying to stop her, to actually starting to believe in her, believe in her methods. Like she's basically starting to believe, okay, you know what, this woman's methods are actually working better than others and some people are not worthy of repenting. But when it comes to Tyrone and Tandy, I did like how this episode kind of puts Tyrone and Tandy in contrast, he's been trying to stop the drugs and the drug dealers, forcing the event in such a way that had a bunch of them ending up in one room only to be killed at the hands of Mayhem. Now Tyrone blames himself for that, but Tandy thinks he's not to blame, that he was just doing the right thing, which I totally agree with by the way, but then she moves on to a shady place, like all of these people do deserve to be taken by Mayhem, that Mayhem's method might actually be the answer. It's actually similar to that moment of belief that some people do not deserve repentance, some people are never going to repent, that's basically out of the sixth issue out of the second volume of Cloak and Dagger. 
Getting closer though to the end of this video, Cloak trapping Bridget in his darkness or Mayhem actually in his darkness is yet in display of another evolution of his abilities to kind of align them more with the comics. Now the fact that Mayhem shrouded in this darkness in the dark dimension sees her boyfriend, her dead boyfriend, still dead but talking, I think that's a reference to how prolonged periods spent in Cloak's shrouded darkness in the comics would basically drive people insane. But these are basically the major points I've got over here, but speaking of other easter eggs, other stray comments and the villains of the season or the possible villain of the season, Father Delgado uses the word despair on this episode. Now the use of the word despair is kind of fitting of the entire episode, the events of the entire episode as well as the status of Father Delgado himself. But there's also the possibility that it's all in reference to despair, the comic book villain, the cloak and dagger comic book villain. Now the pronunciation of Despair, the villain name has varied from one person to the other but it is commonly pronounced as Despair and it kind of suits the villain who feeds on those with a lot of despair, those who have basically lost a lot of hope or have got none left. So you could basically think over here of those girls, the ones that they found halfway through the episode, the way that Tandy describes them as having no hope, none whatsoever. The entire drug bit in this case as well does fit with the idea of the line in the comics, you know the drugs that they inject the abducted girls with, and it is despair that actually created D-Light on the pages of the comics. But with that being said though, my work here is done so you can let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the third episode of the second season of Cloak and Dagger, you can let me know as well if there are any easter eggs, references or parallels that I might have missed on this video. And you can finally let me know if you did like this video by dropping it one of those much appreciated likes, subscribing to this channel and enabling notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, Cloak and Dagger or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning into this one and have a great day.